let's go ahead and flip it around and see what we got underneath so yeah um this new neptunes are running on new software which is called clipper it is 64 bit so we do have the power supply here towards the back and towards the front that's where our electronics are so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and take this little cover off and also if you guys notice here we have four rubber feet on each corner but before we do that let's go ahead and see what's inside this bag so we get an ethernet cable that connects from the printer to your router. We get a little sample of PLA filament in white. Not great, but you do have something to start with. A little spatula here, and this could be useful to get underneath the nozzle. We've got some cutters, and these are very useful as you can cut your filament on an angle and whatnot else. Here we have a USB cable in blue here, and it connects between the printer and the computer. Here's our filament detector that we'll need to install on the printer. Some zip ties for organizing cables. A clean out needle. If your nozzle gets clogged, you can use this to clean it out. So here we have something that says giveaway. Not sure if this is a bonus item or what, but it is a USB adapter for the micro SD card. It is quite small, so I'm not sure exactly what's on there, but maybe something interesting is on there and we'll check it out once we get to the computer. So we also get a thumb drive with a couple nozzles and a PTFE tubing. Looks like an insert for the hot end. So this is our main drive here where we'll find everything for the printer. And we also get a baggie of hardware, which is mostly bolts there that is used for installation and assembly. And for the last part here, we get some tools, open-ended wrenches, a couple screwdrivers, and Allen wrenches. So this is Phillips here, which is included. Let's go ahead and take this panel off. All right, that was pretty easy. We do have a fan connected, pretty large one. We'll go ahead and unplug it. And let's take a closer look at the board. So we can see this is not a normal board as it is a clipper type board that I've seen on other printers. That is the model right there. So it's a ZNPK1 version 1.0. We have a MKS EMC that, so that must be the hard drive, solid state. We got the four stepper controllers. They are heat synced, non-removable. Here we have a cable that goes this side here, this the network looks like. Our ports are there for the front. All our power wires here that come from the power supply. And you guys can see everything is hot glued and very well put together here. So yeah, quite exciting to see printers going to Clipper. So I'm going to put the lid back on and we'll flip it around and start the assembly. All right, so putting the printer together is pretty simple. You guys maybe noticed that we did not have any kind of manual or in paper form that was included. So you're going to find it in this red drive, thumb drive. That's what these nozzles in this bag and there's a PDF in there that I downloaded to my phone and we can kind of go along here so yeah there's some cautions there table of contents this is probably pretty interesting which is the parameters of the printer a little darker here but yeah also shows you all the parts of the printer everything included and step one and putting it together so for the first step we're gonna put the gantry here onto the base let's go ahead and pull out these foam pieces from underneath we'll grab our bag of bolts and we're going to find M545s, which there's four pieces, and they're black. And they're going to go through the bottom. There's some holes here. And so we're going to put the gantry with the front of it facing to the front. It's going to line up. I guess we need to grab our wrench first. That's going to be the largest one. And I'm going to use a spool of filament to prop it up or get our bolt ready through the bottom. You guys see it right here? So yeah, just line it up and start them. And there are two of them. And we're just gonna run these down without tightening them yet. All right, now let's flip around. And we'll do this side, same way here. There's this cable here that goes, so you kind of have to push it to the side, but pretty straightforward. And everything lines up really good. And I'm gonna go ahead and run these down, but don't tighten them quite yet. And the reason for that is because we wanna bring our X axis down, so the separation between the two rails is as even as possible. So I'm gonna grab the belt here and just turn it and that's going to bring it down by turning the lead screws. So you can turn the coupler also. So I'm just going to go all the way down. And so we know that it's pretty happy here. And now we can go ahead and tighten these bolts underneath. Make sure you snug them up pretty well, but don't go crazy on them, as this is the only thing holding the gantry up. So once you start feeling good resistance, that's pretty good. And we'll do the same thing here. So that should be good. Now, if your base is not completely flat, like it moves around, which mine is not, but if it does, just try pushing on the edges to level it out. There are bolts here that you can check if they're tight enough. So mine are 
actually a little bit more looser than they probably should be. So once you flatten it out, you can tighten these bolts up. All right. So for step two, we're gonna be installing the screen holder, which will require three M420 bolts. And that's this guy here. The bolts are gonna go through here. You guys can see the three holes. And it's literally gonna line up right over here. And it goes just like that. So here's the baggie of the bolts. There's actually five in there. Two are for something else. We're gonna grab three of them, grab the correct wrench and start here from the back in. Now there is a magnet right here and it does try to magnetize while you're trying to screw them in. So, but yeah, simply we're just gonna line up the holes with the threads and tighten it on. Not a hard thing to do, just could get a little frustrating with trying to get underneath there. As the wrench is barely long enough to clear the end here, so. But yeah, not a big deal. All right. And that is the screen here, or the screen holder, should I say. All right, so for step three, we're gonna install the screen onto the holder and plug it in. And then after that, step four is quite a few things. There's a filament detector that goes on the top and also our main cable that has a bracket that we need to install and connect it to the hot end. So this is the screen here and it's already plugged in on one side and it's just gonna literally magnetize right here. And then the other end is gonna plug in on the front here to the control panel. So yeah, simple as that. I guess I forgot to mention that the spool holder itself is also with the same step on four there with everything. So yeah. So before we go up, let's go ahead and install this bracket, which holds this cable here that goes from the side. So it's this one on this side that goes up and there's a split of some wires. And right after that, this is where we're going to install this bracket next to the lead screw here. And so the clip is just gonna go around the flat wire. And what I like to do is kind of push on the wire. You guys maybe can see if you push on it, it kind of becomes like a circle. And that's where that you want your bracket to kind of go. So. so you can kind of fold it or if you kind of bounce it around just right, it becomes like a perfect circle and fits right in there. And it can actually slide back and forth pretty easily too, so. Once you get that around, you're gonna connect it here on the top and we'll snug it down with this bolt. All right, so that looks good right there. So if we flip back around to the front, our other end here is gonna to connect to our hot end assembly. Here we also have a relief bracket that the cable goes into. See, hopefully you guys can see. But there's these two locking tabs that we gotta open. And then we're gonna take the cable and just plug it in. And it goes only one way. You can kind of see the little nub goes to the back. And we're just literally gonna push and it's all gonna to lock together. Just like that, so. And now we can feed our cable into the relief bracket. So we're gonna go in one and then kind of help the other side go in and flatten it out. And simple as that, it is on. And so what you wanna do now is you wanna check, make sure you got enough, which as you guys can see we do. We can actually go back just a little if we want to, but this is about right. And so we have plenty of length here for the travel. So let's go here to the top. And I don't know how well you guys can see, but we got a couple threads here brass and this is where we're gonna connect our spool holder which by the way is this piece here and a couple m420 bolts the same ones we used for the screen will go through the spool holder into the top here so yeah guys it's pretty logical here and it all lines up quite well and quite easy to figure out so we do need to install our filament detector. This comprises of two pieces. We got the detector and a bolt and it's a special bolt that swivels and the bolt's gonna go through the bracket here on the inside like that and we're gonna connect it on this side. So you can connect them both, but we can see our wire here that goes to the detectors coming from this side. So if we swivel over, you can see that we got a little brass thread there. And so you should be able to tighten it completely and this will still swivel around. And now we can plug the detector in. Here on the side, we can see where the plug goes. And there's plenty of wire for it to move around. And for the last piece, we got the holder itself where the spool goes, and that literally screws in from either side, but we're gonna screw it from this side because our detector's on this side. I'm just simply gonna tighten it clockwise until it gets tight, and yeah, our spool will go on here, and then it'll feed through the detector and then down into the extruder. So for step five, we're gonna install our super cool large cooling fans there, and that's gonna have the M445 bolts, three of them. And then after that, which is part six here, we're gonna plug everything in on the printer, and then we're gonna check our rollers, adjust what we need, and then it goes into the software and things like that. So let's flip this to the back and we're gonna grab our fan here. So if we look at these vents, they go towards the bottom and the switch here with on and off and the plug goes to the top like this. Yeah, it should line up here, something like that. Let's grab our bolts. And yeah, this is quite a unique idea here that I don't think I've ever seen, at least on a budget printer, implemented in this kind of way. So yeah, pretty cool and that's where it lives here. So we do have a plug that plugs in right here. And I think we should have probably 
If you guys can see here, routed this thing through this bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off again and add it to the pack. Tighten this bolt back up. And now we can plug it in right here. So yeah, that's really nice. Let's go ahead and plug everything in. So if we look at these wires here, so we've got a larger one and a smaller one, and they're labeled with the letter X. The larger one's gonna be for the motor and the smaller one for the end stop switch. So the motor's right here. Let's go ahead and plug that in under there. And the end stop switch is this plug here. All right, so we've got the X plugged in. If we go down to this corner, we can see we got a few wires. They are all different, which is the good part. But the one we're looking for is a Z, and that's gonna plug in into the Z motor here on the bottom. And the other two just plug in as we got a two pin and a three pin plug. Simple as that. As long as nothing's in the way, everything looks good. The bed clears everything. We're done here. And one more thing is the other Z motor, which plugs right here. That is all the plugs. Everything else is plugged in, which we already plugged in the filament detector up here and fan is here. So yeah, for the next part, let's check all our rollers and our belt. And we'll start here at the bottom of the printer. And if you guys can see maybe underneath, there are a couple rollers, one, two, and there's one, two on the other side. So there's four total and they clamp around this channel here. So these two are stationary and the other side where the screen is, they're adjustable. And what you wanna do is you wanna stick your hands under there on both sides and kind of roll them and see how they roll. And you can also see if your bed is wobbling or not. So mine is loose and it's kind of wobbling, so it does need to be adjusted. So the front is way too loose and the back is also loose. So let's go to the other side where you can probably see a little better. Take the screen off. And under there we have two adjustable eccentric nuts. And you're gonna use the larger wrench, like an open-ended one, to turn the eccentric nuts to get closer and farther away. So I'm gonna spin it one way and see how that does. So we got a little closer. Then the other one up front, and I got my hand in the other side, seeing how much resistance there is on the other roller. So you wanna have just like a small resistance where you can still spin the roller. And you probably wanna go ahead and take off the build plate so you don't get it too dirty or greasy from just touching the bed. But yeah, essentially we're just adjusting those eccentric nuts in there so they are grabbing around the channel just good enough where they are slightly compressing but still loose enough where they're not too tight and your bed doesn't wobble. And you should be able to spin the roller in one spot and that should be pretty much perfect. And it feels really good and there's no wobble. Also, we wanna go ahead and check our belt here to see if it's tight enough. And this knob here up front will tighten it and loosen it. So clockwise to tighten it up and counterclockwise to loosen it. So depending on, you know, how loose or tight yours is, you know, you don't wanna make them too tight, but if you start hearing some notes, that's too tight. So you wanna have a really low note. Don't make them too tight as they're quite small. And you don't wanna to put too much pressure on all the rollers and bearings. So now going up here, we're gonna have the same thing with the hot end, but because we put this fan on, you guys can't see. But we essentially have two rollers on the top that are stationary, and then one roller on the bottom, which is adjustable, and the wrench goes underneath here and you can adjust it. So on mine, it's actually adjusted perfectly as I can spin these wheels quite easy and there's lots of friction and there's no wobble. So it's literally perfect on mine. So I'm not gonna adjust it, but again, to adjust it, you go from underneath and it's the same concept, just tight enough around the channel where it's not wobbling, but loose enough where you can spin these. So yeah, that looks good and feels good. And same thing up front here with the adjusting the belt is we're gonna tighten and loosen this knob here to get it just right. So, so mine was actually pretty good already. Get it a little bit tighter and feels good. So yeah, love that they have these knobs for the X and Y. So we do have a few more rollers to look at and that's these here on the Z axis. And normally there's no reason to adjust these unless they're way off because we do have dual lead screws. But if yours are way off, like too tight, then you probably wanna adjust them. If they're too loose, maybe adjust them also. Like mine are slightly loose, but there is drag, so I'm not gonna touch them. And same thing for this side. So they were pre-adjusted from the factory very well. But if you do have to adjust them, the adjusting eccentric nuts are on the inside here. That's pretty much everything for adjustments on the Y, X, and Z.